British Prime Minister Boris Johnson has announced the closure of all UK pubs, restaurants, cinemas, gyms as part of the containment measures. Britain has almost 4,000 confirmed cases, but the real number could be much higher as testing has so far been limited. Government scientists say the virus is spreading quickly across London and many people have ignored advice to stay home. Last orders called in an attempt to hamper the spread of the coronavirus. Despite government warnings to stay home and self-isolate, pubs in the British capital remained full. On Friday, the Prime Minister addressed the country. I do accept that what we're doing is extraordinary. We're taking away the ancient inalienable right of, of freeborn people of the United Kingdom to go to the pub. Obviously, this situation creates an abnormal amount, bringing us to an emergency phase, making us very likely to halt for a few days in order to be able to recover some space. We're also forced to use our premises dedicated for the final farewell. As you can see, this farewell room has become a provisional space. Around the world, the coronavirus outbreak isn't just a health emergency, it's also an economic one. Disruptions to supply chains were a given, but such a dramatic price war in the oil market was unexpected. A falling out between Saudi Arabia and Russia sparked the sharpest one-day crash in oil prices since the Gulf War. Indonesia is one of the countries that's both an exporter and importer, and economists think it could be a challenging time for the country and its oil industry. Like almost everything in recent weeks, the slump in oil prices comes back to the coronavirus outbreak. China, the world's biggest importer of oil, was turning back tankers as its economy began to contract. Saudi Arabia called for a massive cut in production, but Russia disagreed, and in response, Riyadh ramped up production. It's a hot commodity these days, toilet paper. Since the coronavirus outbreak hit, people are stocking up from coast to coast, creating shortages. In North Carolina, authorities say a truck may have been stolen with 18,000 pounds of commercial toilet paper inside. The Guilford County Sheriff's Office says the shipment was lawful, but the trailer had been reported stolen when they discovered the coveted cargo in the back. At this time, the sheriff says the driver is only suspected of stealing the truck and no arrests have been made as they continue to investigate the incident. Some stores like Costco have been limiting the amount of toilet paper customers can purchase at once. Across the United States tonight, several cities have shut down, closing schools, restaurants and implementing curfews. One of the more sinister sights, queues of customers lining up to panic buy weapons, fearing civil unrest and riots. Forget toilet paper. In America today, they're lining up for firepower. We're just concerned that people might be getting a little crazy. Anthony Gordon among dozens waiting for hours outside this gun store in Los Angeles. I've always been on the fence about owning a gun, but we had a family discussion about it and thought it was the right move at this time. Preparing to protect themselves in the event of civil unrest. And while the president moved to reassure the public. Relax, we're doing great. The nation's top infectious disease expert warned things are going to get a lot worse. Uh, 
on a grim day that's seen coronavirus cases in New South Wales surge by more than 80, Australia's most iconic beach, Bondi, has been closed down. Police took the unprecedented action to try to contain the spread of the disease, lashing out at those who flouted the new rules on social distancing. The beach is now closed. You need to leave the water. There were no sharks in the water, just the threat of coronavirus on the sand. Bondi Beach is officially closed. Please move up to the park area. The flags were removed and swimmers were herded off the iconic beach. Not everyone got the message. No, we didn't hear them. Is it just for swimmers? But with police standing by to force the issue, eventually everyone called it a day. The drastic step came after scenes of a jam-packed beach on a Friday night sent shockwaves around the world. This is how well we are doing things in Australia. And believable. 25,000 people, when the number should have been no more than 500, partied into the evening. And South Korea's military says the DPRK has fired two unidentified projectiles off the east coast into the sea. They're presumed to be short-range ballistic missiles. Similar exercises have taken place at least twice earlier this month. On Friday, DPRK leader Kim Jong-un supervised an artillery firing competition to evaluate his country's readiness for combat. Seoul has called on Pyongyang to stop such military demonstrations saying they're very inappropriate given the world is struggling with the COVID-19 pandemic. In the skies over Gaza, migratory birds look for an easy feed. Drawing them here, a giant landfill east of Gaza City. They aren't the only ones sifting through the more than 2,000 tonnes of solid waste dumped every day. Across the road, Abdul Nasser and his team represent the first layer of Gaza's informal plastics recycling industry. They each earn about $9 a day. Others collect plastic from the streets, bringing it to people like Mahmoud Shihab. At his factory, it's shredded, washed and reformed into hoses for electric cabling or irrigation. Five years ago, there were more than 70 plastics factories like this. Now there are fewer than 10. Mahmoud blames the Israeli economic blockade for cutting demand and hampering the electricity supply. To breaking news, country music icon Kenny Rogers has died aged 81. The artist passed away surrounded by family at his home in the US from natural causes. The Rogers family has released a statement saying Kenny Rogers left an incredible mark on the history of American music. His songs have endeared music lovers and touched the lives of millions around the world. His loved ones are planning a small private service. A public ceremony will be planned at a later date due to the COVID-19 outbreak. Pulling the trigger on emergency war powers. Donald Trump, the US president, saying he'll put into effect an executive order he signed just days ago. The Defense Production Act will, in theory, accelerate domestic production of medical supplies, urgently needed by US hospitals to fight the spread of COVID-19. The level of activation has been increased to a grade one level, which is the highest level. We're accelerating the use of new drug treatments. We're advancing legislation to give direct payments to hardworking families. Throughout our country, Americans from all walks of life are rallying together to defeat the unseen enemy. Trump had said he would invoke the law in, quote, a worst case scenario. The move allowing the administration to force American manufacturers to make medical items that are in short supply and requiring those producers to sell the goods to the government.